I've been able to have opportunities to get around and have an opportunity to do things with friends and family. With the ADA, I was able to bring the law to the attention of city leaders and transportation operators to let them know that the paratransit system, as they had it set up before, was incorrect, that people with disabilities after the ADA was passed were to have the same service hours as the regular buses. That's one of the first things that I started with, was to go to the board and let them know that they had to comply with the ADA and have equal hour services here locally. And so therefore we were able to have a evening life, which I was grateful for. I've actually taken accessible public transportation through the area of aging to go from county to county to get from Delaware County all the way to, to LaPorte County, which is about eight counties away, in order to go visit my mom. And what I had to do was call the state police at each county and ask them who had a form of county-wide paratransit, and that's why I had to go through the area agencies on aging, because usually they're the ones that do county-wide accessible transportation. So I did that, and I'm the only person I know that's done that. I don't know if anybody else around the country has done that, but I know I'm the only one in Indiana that's done that to that distance. Since that time, though, they now have an accessible bus system, like a public Miller Trailways that goes from Muncie to Indy, so you don't have to do the county to county. One of the things that I'm the most proud of is that I had been trying to encourage one of the medical accessible transport companies to try to become our uh, local public taxi cab system because we didn't have any accessible cabs. And in 2009, we'd been working on it for like two years, from 2007 to 2009, to we uh, basically had a bunch of stakeholders come together, which included people with disabilities that wanted to have transportation available whenever paratransit wasn't available. You know, because sometimes medical emergencies happen after after the paratransit service is all done and you know even even though that is like 9 15 in the evening and then also just like holidays and and the fact that sometimes people would want to go see people outside of the city limits and we finally got it accomplished in 2009 some other things that i've done is i we actually have a city county council for people with disabilities and we've been working on some accessible locations as far as sidewalks and that type of thing. Some of the victories that I've been, I've been able to help some people get out of nursing homes because the, the Amstad law was there. And a while back when I helped somebody get out of a nursing home in Indiana, we had what was called transitional waivers. And so the, it wasn't money files a person, it was something totally different and less complex. It wasn't something separate that you had to qualify for. And what would happen is they would take the money that they spent on somebody in a nursing home and start them out on a transitional waiver at their own home. And I've been able to help two individuals do that, and I was happy about being able to do that. Now what I basically do is when people call me and ask me, you know, how did they, how can I help them do different things related to the ADA? How can they get help? For things. I either refer them to somebody or I tell them myself how, how they might be able to go through the process.